He's back, everybody. Robert Downey Jr. is back. And man, did he earn it. Thank you, John Favreau, for believing in him. If you're confused why I'm saying this, that's ACDC's Back in Black playing in the background, and it might as well be Robert Downey Jr.'s career theme song. Having a hard time not looking at you now. Is that weird? <laughs> Breaking the ice. Whoa, that was quick. Less than four minutes to turn Tony into the shrapnel-hearted dude in need of a mini-arc reactor. And this is how you mess with your audience through tone shifts. Yeah, haha, pictures, gang signs are funny. Bang, they're all dead. Also, irony. Robert Downey Jr., guys. Am I right? He conveys fear, confusion, and then a tad of indifference and levity, all with facial expressions. He's probably mostly upset because he didn't like that shroud in his face. And then title card. What a movie. Sorry, Morty, but you just don't always need to start your stories where they begin. What the? Bill Gates? So Stark is Paul Allen in this universe? Okay, first, this MIT article is about exactly what the headline says it is. Second, at age 16, Stark was already theorizing and developing AI. And third, this is both a contradictory statement slash self-fulfilling Ultron prophecy and biggest mistake he'll end up making, so far at least. Also, is that his fire safety robot buddy? Is that why he's such a moron because teenage Tony built him? I read that people are complaining that Zemo's December 16th, 1991 date didn't match up with this one, but this is the headline from the day of his funeral, seemingly the day after his death. Howard knew the creator of Space Paranoids? Tony. Bet he would have showed up for Don Cheadle. Okay, so weird coincidences, I guess. Apparently Favreau let slip that Hillary Swank would make a cameo in Iron Man as a diversion from Sam Jackson's Nick Fury cameo. But is it just me or is this actress a dead ringer for Swank? And speaking of cameo, it's smart of Favreau to just watch and not gamble this time around. He ain't his money as Stark and he knows it. You've been called the Da Vinci of our time. What do you say to that? Absolutely ridiculous, I don't paint. And what do you say to your other nickname, the Merchant of Death? That's not bad. Double honesty. Tony gets his James Bond moment and a Bond score. Good morning. It's 7 a.m. The weather in Malibu is 72 degrees. Everything about this house. The heads-up display, self-tinting windows, Jarvis's silky smooth wake-up call, this view, just, yeah. I do anything and everything that Mr. Sark requires, including occasionally taking out the trash. Ooh, that pepper burns. Sometimes I try to do things. It just doesn't work out the way I want it. You know, I wanted to make some connection to Robert Downey Jr.'s 80s and 90s fame roots, but honestly, the thing I remember him most from in the 80s was the pretty boyfriend in Weird Science. So, yeah, can't you picture that kid, whatever his name was, listening to this song, Mitch Kramer style, with headphones on after a night of underage drinking? Is it better to be feared or respected? And I say, is it too much to ask for both? I'm not sure comic Tony Stark is quite as devil may care, happy-go-lucky as Robert Downey Jr., but Robert Downey Jr. made this genius billionaire inventor his own. That's how Dad did it. That's how America does it. And it's worked out pretty well so far. And as one of my favorite speeches, it's even more impressive that they wrote it right before filming this scene. <laughs> even Tony Stark isn't immune to a missile blast. Yet. <sighs> Nope. <laughs> right. Nah. So there's this shot that's only one frame long, and it seems like while being waterboarded, he had the idea for the palladium ring in his arc reactor. It's interesting that they hint at Stark Industries dealing with terrorists, but you could still easily assume these weapons were all stolen by the Ten Rings. It's still the first step in Tony's unraveling. Beautiful beard win. Start working immediately, and when you're done, he will set you free. No, no. No, he won't. Situational awareness. Gonna kill me. You. Either way, and if they don't, I'll probably be dead in a week. This is a very important week for you, isn't it? Man, I love that line. Even me, the ultimate optimist, would struggle when facing my imminent death like this. But Jensen speaks the truth. We're only here for a blip as it is, so make your time count. Sorry to get all preachy on you. See the so I know he just said working in response to what is he doing, but I choose to believe they're actually playing a game of Go Fish. Lafiche. This is one of those scenes where I have no clue what's technically going on, but man does it look cool and make me want to quit everything and become an engineer slash genius. That could run your heart for 50 lifetimes. Yeah. Or something big for 15 minutes. Mark 1 shadowing. It allowed the great Genghis Khan to rule from the Pacific to the Ukraine. History lessons. Eh, Robert Downey Jr.'s workout routine. Whoa, terrorist Tom Morello? What a terrifying intro for the Mark I. In the shadows, stalking these goons. And as unrealistic as this concept is, somehow they made this suit crude enough to really seem like something two geniuses could build in a cave with limited resources. And it's not without its design flaws. But fortunately, there's always dumb henchmen you can count on to execute themselves. Thank you for saving me. 
Don't waste your life. Sincere moment between short-lived friends. Even the emotionally stunted Tony understands the subtext of that thanks and completely submits to Ensign's last commission. There has to be a draft of this screenplay where he emerges from the cave to Black Sabbath, right? I fully expected it in theaters. In hindsight, it was the right call not to play Iron Man, maintaining the intensity of this scene where he tortures everybody. Even Wilhelm! Not bad. Optimism. How was the fun be? Rody to the rescue. Also hugging. Effective immediately, I am shutting down the weapons manufactured division. Turning over a new leaf. That's, that's, that's what we do. That's We're ironmongers. Well, technically, you're the ironmonger, but I see what you're getting at. Come on, we built that thing to shut the hippies up. You know, the Kevin Flynn's and Lebowski's of the world. So, this is something so simple, but it's a perfect example of what makes this movie so well done. There's nary a wasted frame in this whole film. We see Tony build the first arc reactor, and then Yinsen installs it, it implants it, into Tony's chest off screen. So this time we skip the build to get to see Pepper actually put it in. Ever, ever ask me to do anything like that ever again. I, I don't have anyone, but you. Yeah. Candor. Yeah, Robert Downey Jr.'s workout routine. I need you to listen to me. No, what you need is time to get your mind right. Too bad, Terrence. You could have been War Machine in this film had you just taken the time. You'd think that the slow build of an Iron Man suit would get boring, but man, does it not. There's something so satisfying about seeing him work on tiny minute details of both the boot and arm piece, showing all the naked functionality and insane amount of design, engineering, and the occasional hiccup that goes into the Mark II. Again, concept hard to buy, execution totally believable. And I love that they take the time to show us how difficult just hovering is at first. So as he slowly gets the hang of it and finds his balance, we feel like we're on this journey with him. Yeah, I can fly. Complain that these inside the helmet shots are only to sate Robert Downey Jr.'s ego all you want. They're awesome, inventive, and show us how ridiculously amazing his heads-up display is and further solidify how much of a genius he is to be able to process all that information on the screen. And one more look at the intricacy and detail of the suit. Robert sells flying like a champ. And again, it's like a magic genie suit. Whatever you need or want to happen, whatever capability you think it has, it has and more. And somehow every feature is still conceivable. Record for fixed wing flight is 85,000 feet, sir. Records are made to be broken. Come on! And I know this seems risky, but this line Sometimes you gotta run before you can walk is exactly what gives Tony the upper hand in his final battle with Ironmonger. Good thing he installed South State drives in his suit. The boot time on discs would have ended this movie really quickly. Helpful robot. Another pepper burn, but with a side of sweetness. So what's that, like sweet chipotle? Some might criticize Tony for not telling Rhodey and the government to go find and destroy the remnants of his Mark I, but really, without the arc reactor, it's just a really heavy suit of armor. Perhaps if you intend to visit other planets, we should improve the exit. Oh, Jarvis, you minx. Throwing out a little Infinity War shadowing. Connect to the Cisco, have it reconfigure the shell metals, use the gold titanium alloy from the Seraphim tactical satellite. Using the titanium alloy from the satellites is a great reason for the gold color in his suit. The great half. There has to be some fan fiction theory out there about how Stan Lee is actually a time-traveling godlike character similar to Jacob from Lost, right? Strategic Homeland the, Intervention right, Enforcement yeah. Logistics Division. <sighs> Uh, you, get, you need a new name for that. Yeah, I hear that a lot. Ah, Coulson. It's not like an acronym is staring you in the face. Come on, get it together. See, this is one of those wins that sends people to the comment section saying, that sounds more like a sin. But mentioning S.H.I.E.L.D. in this tongue-in-cheek way is the win. And wouldn't it be boring if I just said mentioning S.H.I.E.L.D. in a tongue-in-cheek way? You're missing just a couple of digits The other eight. <laughs> so I got you for the other eight. Flirting. Can I at least get a reaction from you? Panic. I would say panic. More honesty. So here's something you may have missed while you were cursing out Tony for abandoning Pepper on the roof. Number one, this happens. Who do you think locked you out? I was the one who filed the injunction against you. So that could be distracting. And number two... It's a town called Gomira. You may have forgotten that Nietzsche comes from... Gomira. So it has an extra impact on Tony. Apparently Barney's ex-girlfriend Nora has been in the news game for a long time. Iron Man's version of Finestra. really just doesn't get any cooler than this. This scene still gives me chills the way it did the first time I saw him get in the suit in theaters. And then he just takes a quick flight over to Afghanistan. So awesome! Is that snow? Did they actually add snow to this Hollywood set in order to make a believable and accurate Afghanistan, even though the majority of people probably assume Afghanistan, Middle East, must be hot. Yep. Digital anti-stormtrooper aim. 
is all yours. Ooh, that voice. Also generosity. Badass good guy. What a fun and intense scene. Iron Man's first aerial battle where he's just trying to escape with tension throughout that's undercut with his apathetic conversation with Rhodey. He's jogging in the canyon. I thought you were driving. Right, I was driving uh, to the canyon where I'm gonna jog. Iron Man cartoon theme. <laughs> Saving the guy whose wing you trashed. Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. You mean, like, stealing Cap's shield? Right there. That's when Obadiah realized the suit was nothing without the reactor and he didn't need fake stand-in pre-Ben Kingsley Mandarin. Technology. It's always been your Achilles heel in this part of the world. Man, that's got a sting. Wasn't it you who gave this speech? The bow and arrow once was the pinnacle of weapons technology. <laughs> Remember when you guys had us outnumbered? Yeah. It's interesting that throughout this movie, Tony is handed things, but when he gets back from Afghanistan, he says, There's nothing to sign. There's the next mission. After learning that weapon shipments were being made without his knowledge through being handed pictures. Maybe a bit of a stretch, but I'd buy it. You're all I have to, you know. Sweet moment between these two. Also, are those some kind of metal contact burns on his neck? I know what you're going through, Pepper. If there's one thing that aspiring villains could learn from Jeff Bridges, it's not slow talk interrogation or backhanded creepy compliments. You are a very rare woman. It's invade their personal space. Puzzle. Of course. <laughs> William, here is the technology. See what I mean? Did you forget about our appointment? No, right now. Come with me. Right We're going to have it right now. Yep, walk with me. Ah, Coulson. Always with the best timing. Ordered the hit on you. All right, Tony. Now you're shocked, but still paralyzed, but shocked. No, more paralyzed, but still shocked. Dumb robot to the rescue. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Correct. Next time, baby. Also correct, though not you, Terrence. I thought it'd be bigger. That's not just innuendo. She saw this. So she'd be expecting a suit 10 feet tall. <laughs> Iron Hulkmonger. <laughs> Saving Pepper and entering into an awesome power suit fight. <laughs> Bike slap. Just leave it on the screen. Stop telling me. Hey, take it easy on future vision. You specifically said... Keep it posted. Worse! Very clever, Tony. And that's what makes the conclusion to this film so great. Tony proves right in his first outing that he's more than just a suit, since his suit is nothing more than a glorified shield at this point. Thank goodness Obadiah doesn't have anti-stormtrooper aim. Huh, there must be an easier way to say that. Oh well. Hey, blue beam to space. Who remembered that? It's a bodyguard? He's my body? I mean, is that, that's kind of flimsy, don't you? Haha, <laughs> can already tell his ego is way too big to have a bodyguard. Meaning film Tony's ego is bigger than comic Tony's ego. From the strategic homeland and just call us S.H.I.E.L.D. Atta boy, Coulson. Yeah, you know, if I were Iron Man, I'd have this girlfriend who knew my true identity. <laughs> so many typical superhero moments being undercut. Meta secret identity girlfriend jokes and that moment we shared trope where Pepper crashes the reality of what happened down in his head. Left me there by myself. Is that the night you're talking about? Good stuff. Entirely to make wild accusations or insinuate that I'm uh, a superhero. Modesty. I am Iron Man. Ding. Also roll credit. Oh, never mind. Much more appropriate time for this song. Man, remember the days before mid credit stingers? You kids don't even know. We had to sit until the very end just to get a glimpse of that eye patch. But fun fact, Edgar Wright is actually the one that recommended to Favreau to put it at the very end of the credits. They did it. They really did it. They made an awesome Iron Man film. I barely believed it when I saw it in theaters. In the same way that Reynolds and Jackman are their respective characters, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. He made this character his own. Man, oh man, it's been almost a decade since this movie kicked off the MCU. I try not to really rank films like this. There are just so many different factors and variables. So I'm not saying Iron Man is my favorite MCU movie, but you can see threads of almost every other movie throughout this film. So many of the things that make this universe great were tried, tested, and ultimately succeeded in this film. Some have been used to death, a lot of people are tired of the quippiness, but they really nailed the origin story excitement. And I'm not saying they're all the same either. Each Captain America film had its own personal feel, and each MCU movie's themes and foes are suited to its individual hero. Yet they still all exist together in a cohesive universe. I feel like I've been hard on Tony when he comes up in Avengers movies or Cap movies. I forget how much he's been through. Tony has a number of arcs throughout each adventure slash conflict he's involved in, and they really just touch the surface of his personality in this film while still introducing an intriguing character. Yinsen puts it best. So you're a man who has everything and nothing. 
And he also has very few people he trusts. Happy is a loyal servant, but Pepper is the only person he truly confides in. I don't have anyone, but yeah. And it's not just what we're told through the characterizations of Tony, it's his character in general. He stands alone as the only quippy, quirky guy in the bunch. Pepper occasionally matches wits with him, but other than that, it's as if he exists in his own little world. The straight-laced military man Rhodey in one year, and the cunning businessman Obadiah in the other. I've heard complaints that Tony's real arc is shuffled to the side for the Iron Man suit, but I see it more as a PTSD response to his time in the cave with Yinsen. He comes back a new man, totally tunnel vision on the goal of fixing the world. The adrenaline rush from the time he's captured to a showdown with Ironmonger wouldn't have let up. It's not until later films that we see the cracks start to show. Tony Stark was our introduction to the MCU. He's the first superhero for our purposes, and like I said in my Avengers video, he's our surrogate into this universe. We go through the growing pains with him. It's hard to create realism in a story about a billionaire genius who builds an invincible power suit in his basement alone, but there's a grit to this story that actually grounds it. One thing I noticed and avoided at first because I know how people feel about product placements, and there are quite a few, but for me, wouldn't generic burger company, default phone carrier and manufacturer, or this car that's clearly an Audi but strangely has no emblem be more conspicuous? I don't notice Dell, I'd be much more likely to notice Pell. So this really goes for all movies, I guess, but brands exist and they're visible in 90% of our everyday life. What a way to kick off the MCU. Really couldn't be happier for Jon Favreau. He assembled an amazing cast. It may not have been as accepted right after this movie, but Gwyneth Paltrow is Pepper Potts now, and Jeff Bridges really killed it as the villain. I love him as a hero, but he has a special way about him when it comes to being evil. Doesn't look like we'll be getting Iron Man 4 anytime soon, but you never know. I'm really liking this dynamic being created between Iron Man and Spider-Man, though. No teaser frame this week, but speaking of Spider-Man, I do have a question for you. Homecoming is coming soon, and I'm planning on winning some Spider-Man movies. So, which would you prefer? OG Raimi Trilogy or Andrew Garfield Amazing Reboot? Vote in the little thingy up there and give me your compelling reasons in the comments. I'll say defend Spider-Man cringe dancing down the street is probably a decent place to start.